Fat Shark Dominator Digital FPV Goggle is going to change the landscape of FPV goggles as you know it. I cannot believe what I'm about to tell you. Fat Shark is releasing a new digital FPV system that rivals DJI. Fat Shark was the top of the analog goggle market, but competitors like Orca and Skyzone came along and started eating into their share. And it seemed like digital was the way forward. Where's there to go with analog goggles? They've pretty much peaked. So Fat Shark partnered with HD Zero, and that was how they were going to get digital into their goggles. It's not like DJI was going to put their technology into a Fat Shark goggle, is it? <clears throat> but if you look at this flight footage, it sure as hell looks like Fat Shark somehow convinced DJI to give them their proprietary technology and let them put it into one of their goggles. But Greg French, the owner of Fat Shark, assures me this is not true. This is not DJI. What's the number one feature you want from this new system? Oh, definitely, definitely higher quality video. You know, being able to see, you know, wires and branches and stuff is... More resolution. More resolution, definitely. Uh, yeah. It's a huge where piece. You, where do you fly right now? I fly, actually I fly both DJI and analog. I, okay. I bounce back and forth. So what would it take to make you switch from DJI to Ooh. this new system? I mean, DJI gives you 720p out of the gate, so they would have to match or do better than the 720p with DJI and uh, at least lower the latency. It looks really good. What does it, it look like? It looks like DJI 2.0. It, it looks a lot like DJI, DJI, doesn't it? DJI 2.0, that's what I'm saying. Range, is, it like range range is good, I don't feel any more latency. I'm going behind this thing. Oh, okay, nope, I started there. The battery's probably getting low. Yeah, I'm gonna bring it back. Hmm. All right, so when can we get, like, do we buy a set, like, right now? Pre-order starts in tomorrow, 20 hours. We plan on shipping in June. <laughs> is the circle something that I'm seeing on the quad, or is that on the outer so lower rim? There's, like, the blacked out area. Oh, that's the frame. On the, the, on the bottom. Yeah, the frame bottom two corners. Yeah. Okay. Corey got people I would say, his, this quad is good now that it's got this. Yeah, now that we tighten up. All the screws are in. There's no latency, bro. <laughs> There's no latency, no. Says, says the guy. These antennas made a big difference. Oh, you swapped yeah. the antennas? Yeah, I swapped it from when you flew it. All right, I'm going to fly it again. Back and I'm going to fly it again. Yeah. You know what's weird, though? Like, it looks as good as DJI, but it still gives you that, like, good old analog feeling. If that sounds weird, maybe not. No? It's because you it, can feel the lower latency. Is it just because you can see the beta flight OSD? Yeah, <laughs> maybe that's, 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 that's what it is. <laughs> Yeah, it's weird. Seeing it's like, like they took the newest technology. <laughs> so there's a little bit of glitch love. when I come through the uh, like right beside this thing, or on the other side of it. Oh really? Watch. Let's see it. You get a stutter. So you're like behind the metal. See it right there. I didn't. I don't see it. I in saw the video a little out, bit, but I'm it's not. Very, very. Like I can't feel metal. it. I think so. you would get that on normal DJI as well, with the same power. Cat. Push. I'm not doing it. I don't know, it feels pretty good, bro. I saw a little glitch there. Yeah. There's something we gotta get out of the way. The firmware for this system is still in development. There are a lot of features that are not done yet, like DVR recording, and that's why we recorded this using an HDMI capture card on my laptop. And the HDMI out is still a little glitchy. Uh, they're still integrating the Betaflight OSD. It has full Betaflight OSD support, but they just started sort of integrating that, and it means that the video is a little glitchy sometimes when before it was butter smooth, or so I'm told. Old. You see in the lower right hand corner of the screen it says low power mode unable to record. Yeah, that's not true. Where it's in full power mode just that warning doesn't go away. They've got about two months to finish this firmware before they actually start shipping products to customers. The products are being manufactured right now and they are finishing up the firmware. So it is too soon to judge things like how much range does the system have? How smooth is it? How does it compare to DJI? Obviously people are gonna make those comparisons but given that the state that the firmware is in, we just have to trust that Fat Shark is gonna get this right by the time the product releases. Go to the water tower. You sure? Yeah, go to the water tower. Are you? Go! Oh! <laughs> Put your battery. You're at 3.79. He's, he's good. Let's see. Forest flies for at least 90 seconds. Just so everybody keep a vision of where if I do go out. Yeah. 
21 milliseconds, 41 milliseconds, 21 milliseconds. It jumped, see, it's weird how it jumped up. Just and get a little normal, though. You would get that on the tower. Is there going to be an option for clean video out versus OSD? Oh, but nice. I wouldn't go behind the tree line, That's a good probably. Question. You can dive inside it. There's... Oh! oh. oh. <laughs> what do you think, Corey? It's pretty fucking good, man. I'm sorry, can I not custom your channel? <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, man. It's pretty good. If I can go all the way out there and dive that, it's pretty respectable, man. The system also has a 1080p video transmission mode, where reported latency increases from about 21 milliseconds to about 40 milliseconds. But we were unable to record this mode for very long because of technical issues. I've snuck back to my room to give you guys a closer look at the goggles. The screens are 1080p resolution with a 90 FPS refresh rate. The system is capable of transmitting at up to 120 FPS, but the screens will only display 90 FPS. The field of view is 46 degrees, and bear in mind when you're comparing that field of view to a goggle like the HDO2 or the Orca goggles that this is a 16.9 widescreen FOV. So a 4.3 screen with a 46 degree field of view is going to be taller, and a 16.9 screen with a 46 degree field of view is going to be wider. So it's not directly comparable. Having flown them, I can say that the field of view is pretty large and immersive. The goggles have adjustable IPD, it's listed as 57 to 70 degrees, and they have adjustable focus. It's listed as plus 2 to minus 6. However, I have to say, I have a minus 625 diopter in one eye and a minus 675 diopter in the other eye, and I was able to turn them until the image was focused and then turn them some more until it was out of focus the other direction. So I would say that it goes past minus 6, maybe to minus 7 or even further. With my minus 675 diopter, I was able to get it focused just fine. For anybody who's concerned about the focus adjustment, moving the lenses in and out, and uh, like with the HDO2s first came out, people complained about them brushing against their eyelashes. Uh, Bot Grinder had this problem. Uh, these have internal focus adjustment, so no matter where you set the focus, the screen will be in exactly the same place. Yes, this right here is a power button. And they've done something clever here, because there's never been universal agreement on whether a goggle is better with a power button or whether it just turns on when you plug it in. Now, if you look at Orca goggles, they handle that in software. Fatshark has got a much simpler solution. The power button is latching. So you press it in once and it's on. You press it in once again and it's off. It doesn't actually lock into place. You can't feel whether it's locked in or not, but it's doing it internally. And that means that if you want the goggles to just turn on as soon as you power them on, just put the switch in the on position and leave it there. Otherwise, you can turn them off and on simply by moving the switch. And it is a physical switch. It's not software. Uh, like the goggles just cut power as soon as you press that switch. Next to the power switch, we've got this USB uh, port, and that USB port presumably is used for things like firmware updates, uh, but also is used for HDMI output. So if you have a USB-C to HDMI cable, it will work, and you will get native HDMI out. <laughs> and I guess some things never change. Here is the port for the SD card for the goggle DVR, just where Fat Shark has always put it. What about the goggles fit? Um, I have to say, there are basically two schools of thought when designing goggles. One is to design them for people with more curved faces, and one is to design them for people with flatter faces. Some people say that uh, Europeans and Westerners have more curved faces and Asians have more flat faces. I would say that this goggle is not quite as curved as my face is. So I do have a little bit of light leak down here at the bottom and it has more pressure on the center than it does like here at the bottom and at the edges. However, uh, no set of goggles is going to 100% fit everybody's face and presumably there will be aftermarket foam that will be able to address that. At least that's what I would hope. Oh, it does look like the faceplate's removable as well, so presumably you could do a different profile of faceplate. The slider on top of the goggle is for the defogger. So the fans are running all the time because the uh, screens can heat up and need active cooling pretty much all the time. The defogger opens up the uh, air intakes so that air can get through if your lenses are fogging up. 
Up here at the top, we've got a joystick for accessing the goggle menus. We've got a back button for backing out of the menus, and this is the record button for the onboard DVR. Okay, there we go. All right, right so, so it's, it's a little, feels a little weird if you're not on your face, because like this is, it's like right, left, okay. right, you know what I mean? Right. So, so you're in so there. here we go. Channel, audience. Channel, down, audience settings. mode, settings, and, now none of these and then DVR, yeah. right? These are DVR playback. No. For settings, we got camera settings, mm -hmm. and a lot of this stuff doesn't work because it's still in Right, it doesn't work, and it's not persisting, right? Yeah. Rotation works. <laughs> yeah, okay. Power, milliwatt. Auto power, nice. 200, 500, 700, 700. Seven hundred is the max right now. Okay. Are they right Resolution seven twenty ten eighty. I'm not going to change that. Yeah, Bit rate twenty five or fifty. You can change that. Set it to fifty. I don't know if it actually does anything. And language, yet, nice, nice. Don't change the language. No, no, no. <laughs> it's going to break it. And then back. Yeah, the, there's stuff in device that might be worth seeing. Okay. Where's uh down. oh I see down here I see display yeah, we, need, we need something to indicate that those yeah. are yeah zoom custom OSD brightness focus mode got it a lot of this looking very familiar rec settings 108060 VTX rec it records on board rec loop rec device Format SD card, takeoff recording, and format VTX. What's format VTX? So that's the storage is built into the video transmitter. Uh, it's got like so a you can format the, the, um, the built-in built flash. Greg French, Fat Shark, and we're here at GTI, Government Training Institute, uh, for Rotorite Rampage, and that's why the, uh, the tactical stuff in the background. But we're here to talk about the new Dominator. I'm gonna, I wanna call him the Dominator HD, because Dominator I'm old enough to remember the Dominator analog goggles. You're calling the Dominator goggles, which is Fat Shark's new digital FPV high definition system. Correct. It's accurate? Very accurate. Okay, this is, you have to be so on top of the world right now. It's uh, pretty exciting. I mean, it's, uh, it's, you work a long time on something and you, and uh, it's, um, when you finally get to the point where you're about to, you know, it's about to be released and the world's gonna see it and it's gonna, and uh, you get to, Really, and actually being here is gonna be fantastic because I actually get to see people's reactions to this product and get to experience first the first hand what people are gonna think and feel. And uh, yep, yeah, it's like it's, it's a project. It's it's so nice to build something and then here it is. You know, it's kind of getting the finish line and having a, something to be proud of. It's, yeah. it's just exciting. Um, I think that there are probably people out there who thought that the HDO2 was the end of sort not the end but sort of the top of analog fpv like that goggle and and then where do you go from there there wasn't much further you can go with that so then it looked to me at least it looked for a while like the way forward for fat shark was going to be to partner with hd zero right. and move into the digital age and that sort of fell apart for reasons which aren't really relevant right this minute unless you want to talk about them hd zero was an amazing system I mean, it, at that time, I really thought that was the, the future. I mean, it's broadcast. It's a you know, low latency for the racing market, and you know, as a, you know, not a great pilot myself, but I certainly. <laughs> I, say, seen the, I, seen I identify. <laughs> I also think of myself as not a great pilot. And you know, I, I love flying HG Zero. I think the experience is amazing with it. Uh, but, but you do want. I've come to appreciate link quality. You know. The, the, the ability that you just can trust your equipment, that you're, you can trust your image, you can, if you get into trouble, you can, you know, kind of get your way out of it without having to go find your quad back. But you know, I recognize that there is uh, other systems. And I mean, historically, Fat Shark doesn't partner or doesn't uh, doesn't build receivers, doesn't build transmitters. We, we right. build goggles. Right. And I'm, you know, happy to work with anybody, and, you know, whether it's analog or digital, and and. Uh, we just happened to find a well, partner that was pretty, can, that, that's a, needed a good pair of goggles. <laughs> what I think is so cool about this is that uh, whoever the partner is, whoever is actually making the technology, it definitely feels like Fat Shark is driving the development. Uh, I wouldn't say Fat Shark is actually de spearheading development on it. Uh, the company, uh, the partner, is uh, very FPV centric, and they are—they've always been. They're 
very responsive to to the industry and I think a lot of what is coming into your scene and your experiencing is actually from pilots right yeah. uh, earlier uh, you were talking about how uh, you know when one when one company moves it really pushes the whole market forward right um, how do you think the release of the DJI FBV system affected the FBV market as a whole and and Fat Shark's development plans and so forth? Can you speak more about that? I mean, it was always my you know my dream, my goal to have the you know to be able to fly FBV in high digital resolution and clarity. I mean, I thought it was actually fantastic that DJI released a pair of goggles that was you know, it was very close to what my vision was and I was like mm -hmm. okay you know, it wasn't me but you know at least we got what I wanted <laughs> right right <laughs> and, at least uh, somebody did it yeah exactly and then I was able to fly it and enjoy it and uh, and, uh, and I mean, really you, their engineering is just unbelievable and, nobody can dispute that yeah and uh, but I, I think was, we we wouldn't have these systems if it wasn't for DJI you know to, if somebody didn't raise the bar and showed us that yes it's possible I mean, you know before DJI, it's like, uh, is digital really gonna, ever going to happen? And like, oh, yeah, once you see, once you see right. it, it can be done. Like the four-minute mile, right? Yeah. As soon as somebody does it, then everybody believes it can be done and decides they're going to do it too. Exactly. Um, let's talk about the goggles. Uh, you said you looked at the DJI goggles and you were like, these are good, but there were some things I would change. What kind of things would you change that presumably you did change when you designed these goggles? The... Their design, their design choices were, were excellent. I mean, they, using the, the large format panels allows for uh, developing optics that are relatively, that are easier, less challenging, cheaper, panels are cheaper. Right. Right. So to hit that price point, that was definitely the, uh, you know, that, those are excellent choices. And, you know, that would certainly, something I would, would do as well. But, uh, you know, for FPV market, it really seems that people want the best. You know, they want the best visual experience. And that became very clear with the HDO2 is that, you know, all that micro displays is just, just they're beautiful. You know, they're bright, they're gorgeous, the colors are beautiful. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, yeah. You know, you know, it's also, you, they look, you know, they make more compact design where you want to play. And, yeah. Well, that's one of the big complaints about the DJI goggles is the large size, which is driven by the, I think they're two-inch screens, if I'm right, right. Um, which makes the optics simpler and less expensive, but they're just big, they're heavy, you feel them. These are much, these are the size of a, like an HDO2, um, but with all the sort of digital goodness inside. This goggle is really poised to take Fat Shark, potentially take Fat Shark to the sort of top of the FPV market. It, you know, at, at the current time, you know, in the, oh, Fat Shark rose easily to the top of the analog market. I don't mean to say easily like it was right. easy for you to do, but handily, there was really no competition for them in analog markets. Um, when digital came out, it felt like Fat Shark struggled a little bit to find its footing. Right. And now potentially you've got something that is going to take you to the top. Um, how, I'm actually more excited that it's going to give FPV back to the community. I mean, it's, it's, you know, the companies that are involved in this are FPV centric and, you know, they want to listen to the, to the, to the community. They want to build it for the community. Um, the goggles don't have analog capability, do they? No. No. A lot of people who still fly analog are going to kind of wish somehow you had shoehorned an analog module in there. I'm going to assume they still have their pair of analog goggles that they could just Fair. use. AV input? No? Nope. No. So one, you're... Was one, one way or the other. In, input or output. So, yeah. yeah. So you're all in on, on digital at this point. Okay. How much longer do you think, just, uh, you know, look into your crystal ball. How much longer... Uh, I, was, I want to say how much longer until analog is, like, done. But it'll never be completely done. Like, do you think digital currently has 50% market share among FPV pilots? Uh, yes, they would. Yes. Do you think it... What do you think it's 75? Like, where would you put it? Like, just... I would say it's north of 50, yes. I think your spitball number is better than most people's hard data. Yeah. How much longer do uh, you think uh, analog is going to be a major player? I think it really depends on the pilot. I mean, do I fly analog anymore? If I like testing antennas or something? Yes, because it's a great way to see how the, how the video degrades and get a really good idea yeah, of all the antennas point. point. But I don't enjoy it compared to, I mean, once you have the clarity of digital, it's just kind of... It's true. <laughs> it's just as easy to turn on 
put the digital goggles on as it is to put the analog goggles. So, you know, I'm not going to fly analog, but uh, that's not to say there isn't places for it. So. The current system is a variable latency system similar to DJI. Right. As you get further away, the latency goes up. As you get closer, the latency goes down. HD0, of course, is a fixed latency broadcast based system. and I think uh, some people are going to wish that it was fixed latency. How did you get from, originally you were with HD0 with fixed latency. How did you right. get from there to here? I mean, obviously, the biggest reason is there was another, you know, became aware of an, another system that's available. And, uh, you know, with my own personal experience with analog, HD0 and flying DJI, you know, Certainly, the, uh, the the winning points of HD zero that we that were that we're going with was you know the fixed latency of the broadcast you know, and those all you know appeared you know and still are incredibly important. Uh, but as a kind of more of a let me say recreational pilot, I certainly appreciated the the link integrity over anything else. You know, it's just you know just the, like just the confidence that your that your video is going to be there for you and you're going to be able to get your quad back. Uh, so, but in answer to your question about uh, you know where is this you know where is this going to go, uh, is is it possible to have fixed latency? Is it fixed? Um, and those are questions. I think the answer to that question would be it would certainly be looked into. It would certainly be addressed. You know, if if, if there is a you know demand from the market and demand from the pilots, and, and it will certainly not you. Know, It'll be attempted. <laughs> hey there, folks. It's Joshua from the future here. And if I look tired, it's because it's 1.30 in the morning and I was just about to render this video and upload it so you can watch it first thing in the morning. And I've just noticed something that calls into question one of the claims made in this video, and I have to include it. So there's this image that's going around the internet uh, from a noted DJI leaker and it says that there is a new product coming, the DJI Avata. Now, I don't know what the DJI Avata is, but I literally just this second realized this. The DVR files in the Fat Shark goggle are named Avatar HD. Avatar, Avata, like that can't be a coincidence. At the beginning of this video, I said that the Fat Shark Dominator FPV system would change the landscape of FPV goggles as you know it. And I stand by that statement. Because there have only been two choices until now if you wanted a digital FPV system. DJI and HD Zero. And now there's third. And this isn't a situation like when DJI hands pretty much finished products to Cadex and Cadex relabels them as Cadex Vistas. That's not a new choice. That's just the same choice under a different name. According to Greg French, this is a completely different third independent system. And this system is being developed by a company with deeper historical ties to the FPV market than DJI. If you're interested in trying out this system, it is available for pre-order right now. There are links in the video description for where you can pick it up. Uh, if you are ready to pre-order, more power to you. But there are clearly some kinks to be worked out yet. And we're, like I said earlier, putting a little bit of faith in Fat Shark that they will work those kinks out by launch day or they're, obviously they're not going to stop working on launch day, they're going to keep improving it. And that to me is one of the most exciting things about this system. That a company like Fat Shark is going to work to keep improving it, giving us things that we've asked for for a long time and not gotten, things like uh, DJI OSD in the goggles and so forth in a link that has the image quality and maybe the range and performance of DJI. That remains to be seen. You can bet that as soon as production units are available, I will be testing them. But for now, that's going to do it. Tell me what you think in the comments. I really have never meant that more than I mean it right now. Are you ready to switch? Are you excited? Are you disappointed? Are you let down? Are you? Tell me in the comments. I will see you there. Happy flying. What are you doing in here? The least you could do is subscribe or join my Patreon or like just here's another video I picked out for you. Jeez.